Now let's start the uh, uh, lecture on the, the seventh uh, cyclical crisis happening in China in the uh, year of since the year of 1991 to 1995-1996. That is uh, very close to last time. I mean, last uh, crisis happened in 88-89, and then it's very soon. It's because of very complicated in international uh, uh, current situation, uh, especially caused by uh, 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 American lead Western countries block China again since the year 89. And also the 89 is the year of the uh, East European Socialist uh, uh, collapse. And uh, caused by a different events, happened in international society. And China got to deal with not only domestic issue, but also the international issues. So there's just a one, the, the uh, 89, 88, 89 uh, uh, stagnation uh, crisis happened just several years later. And there's the, the, the other crisis followed. So that is the seventh. So last time we talked about the sixth uh, cyclical crisis happening in the year of 88-89. And it's uh, mainly caused by the marketization. When the Chinese central power want to open uh, to invest, uh, uh, investment, and uh, they got to follow the Western system to marketize the economy in China. And then that make China get a kind of relinking with the Western capitalist society, with the West capitalism. And then when they marketize their original planning system, especially trying to release control of all the raw materials and the funds and whatever into the markets, and then to give the 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 uh, markets, the market can de can market decide the, the price, and to make all the enterprises follow the market system, that is a, a big change. And the first uh, uh, m the first measure of marketization in the year of 1988 uh, immediately turned to the uh, high inflation. So that is a the. the the late 1980s problem, but when the early 1990s, and uh, we have to give the the background of the early 1990s. Why the China very soon to have the seventh cyclical crisis, and the, the first, we should know that the the 1991 is the year of Soviet Union collapse. And uh, 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 after 89, East European socialist countries uh, dismissed. And then followed by 1991, Soviet Union collapse. At that time, most of Western countries, no matter its media or plantation or uh, other uh, uh, field, the mainstream all think that China will be the next. After Soviet Union collapse, and then the China will be collapse. They said maybe next month, maybe next year. So China cannot stand. And uh, that is a very strong uh, price. That's a strong pressure. And uh, also because that time, just uh, when the, the, the late 1980s crisis happened, in 1990 and 1991, China is still be in the period of depression, and uh, the economic growth is very low, and uh, the the people's income cannot increase, so the local demand, I mean domestic demand, cannot increase, so that is a difficult uh, period, and also caused by the American block China and no foreign investments can flow in, in China. 
So this China at that time just in the very special period of readjustment of national industrial structure. They need large amount of investments. That is a, but when the capital became very, very short, it's extremely short. So it means that they cannot keep going of readjustment of the national industrial structure. So the, most of these, uh, these are problems put together and make the, the China fall into a kind of very difficult situation and also caused by the, the uh, Soviet Union collapse. The American power can be a kind of polar power in the world. And uh, 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 and, but meanwhile, uh, there are several new events taking place, uh, like uh, EU. And uh, after Soviet Union collapse, the large number of European capital flow into the Russia and the other Eastern European countries and took large amount of profit. And then that is uh, the, the basic events for facilitate the European Union uh, grow up as a power. So originally there is a twin power, the world controlled by United States and Soviet Union. But nowadays, Soviet Union collapse, just uh, two years or three years later, I mean, 1991, Soviet Union collapse, three years later, 1994, EU became the second power. Not the, the, the same competitor of the polar power of US, but EU is a very important world power and in, 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 the, in the international society. So it's very important phenomena. And the second one is NAFTA. So the NAFTA lead by US, joined by Canada and uh, Mexico. It's an, the whole of the North American countries can have uh, the benefits from the regional integration. So it's also very important in the national events. So the first EU, second is NAFTA, and then the third one is ASEAN. That means the Southeast Asian countries, they organize as kind of a lie. So the region, nowadays, when 1980s, the neoliberalism trying to push the globalization, especially by the financial capital, to keep the global financialization going on. But indeed, after Soviet Union, Perhaps it's a very practically reality. There is there are three different regional integration organizations burned out. So that is a EU, NAFTA, and ASEAN. So it's also very uh, interesting uh, 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 events internationally. So once. When we talk about the, the, the Soviet Union collapse, we must give some explanation, give some reasons as a different as a mainstream. We talk about 1980s neoliberalism led by US and the UK. We need to pay attention to what is that time. When US increased the interest rate, when large amount of the Lisa international funds it's a flow inside of the U.S. Very soon to make U.S. have a bubbleized financial capital. And this financial capital flow into the stock markets and the future markets and the wholesale market, whatever, created large risk. And then soon to make American have the financial capital crisis in May of 1980s. And at that time, Americans transfer out their financial crisis by decrease the oil price, increase the green price in the international uh, uh, future markets. And when the oil price decreased, it means that 
his com the American's competitor, Threat Union, originally they have the, the interest by exports the oil. So the oil price decreased, means the Threat Union have a little trade surplus. And then Threat Union short of, in, especially in 1986 to 87, Threat Union have a, a short of the grain. I mean, the, that's because of the uh, natural disaster and something happened. And then they are short of the grain supply. But the grain price increased, even doubled. So it means that Soviet Union must pay more hard currency to buy grain. So one side, when oil price decreased, they have a little surplus. They have even no surplus. Another side, when grain price goes high, they need to pay more hard currency to buy grain. So that means unbalance. That means that the deficit in Soviet Union. And then that is uh, one reason of the Soviet Union, the society cannot be satisfied. It's similar as uh, nowadays, this, uh, in, in the new century, Venezuela, Iran, and, uh, and uh, Russia, they all have the, the almost the same problem. When the oil price decreased and the green price increased, these, uh, these uh, future markets have such kind of similar phenomena. Happened in 1980s to the, the exactly towards the Soviet Union, now towards to other so competitors. These, uh, these uh, events happened again. So that is a uh, help us to understand why that the late 1980s and the early 1990s, the East Asian, uh, East European countries, as uh, the socialist countries collapse and the Soviet Union collapse. There are somehow these uh, international market uh, uh, impact uh, play an important role. And also caused by Soviet Union at that time just rely on this uh, battery system. Means that they just exchange the, the, com the, the, the products, the commercial goods, and they calculate it by the account. They don't need the, the, the paper currency. So means that the whole of the Soviet Union and the, and the East a, a European socialist countries at that time, not the monetization. So means that the, if you calculate how much as the real products produced, if you calcul calculate the, the real products, they are very much high. So if you calculate the, the, the industrial products and the and the textiles products, whatever, these uh, raw materials products, you can have a big number. But if you calculate into the GDP, you know from the 1980s, when American lead their economy from the real economy into the financial economy, from the industrial economy into the, into the, 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 the capital economy, financial capital economy, they change Sorry. So the Western countries change the calculation system, the statistics system. Statistic, not calculate how much real products, and they calculated how much by market. So if the Soviet Union lead this uh, socialist countries, not use the market system, means that if you if you compare the GDP. The socialist system, these are socialist countries, GDP much lower than Western countries. And GDP means that you need to put your, your commercial goods into the markets and then you sell it and then you can calculate how much is the added value. But if you just exchange how many green, how many cotton, you change to how many steel, how many uh, automobile, that is just uh, right into the account not use the currency. So that is a quite different system. So these are difference made that the sufficiently Soviet Union and other socialist countries e economic competition is lower, is backward, not so advanced. That means 
they if they don't uh, going forward into the monetization or into the market capitalization means uh, you know that we have gave the concept that the, the financialization have a two main part one is monetization means that whatever you produced need to be monetized and then your country can issue a lot of paper money and then to all the all of this uh, this uh, monetization can calculate it into your economic growth so you have a more com competitive uh, uh, growth and that is a uh, monetization another one is the capitalization means that your your firms uh, your enterprises your companies you need to go to the stock market to capitalize whatever you have as a properties yes you do have a large number of the properties but these properties if not you just uh, stay there store there not put into the stock market stock market means intangible markets the intangible uh, 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 events to describe whatever you have as a properties so there is a two things one is a monetization another is capitalization put together is a financialization so most of these uh, these uh, socialist countries haven't step in the financialization it's because of they rely on the battery system that means that it's just exchange their 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 products it's a physical products and that is enough they don't need to have a lot of money so they are not the, they are not use the money as a symbol to symbolize their properties so that is the difference Nowadays, most of these, uh, these uh, uh, social movements in developing countries, they have no such kind of basic knowledge. They only think that the socialist system collapsed. But socialism never been collapsed. Just because of somehow these countries, they haven't adopted such kind of measures as a policy. So it means that when, they, when these countries collapse, it's because of somehow these are politicians, they take this Western concept. When they still remain in the physical production and the physical products exchange, they haven't used the money to, to, to label, to indicate whatever they have. So that is a, another important event, make people notice that what is the reality. So, but it's a big lesson. We have to know that it's a very big lesson because that time China also just uh, started to marketize their economy. I mean, Chinese economy. China also haven't issued a large number of the paper money to monetize their physical economy. China at that time in the late 1980s has the similar problems. China has no stock markets, no future markets, and also the real estate also have no markets. So they have, you know, that is a very interesting. That at late 1980s, China almost have a similar economic system as other European socialist countries. But when other European socialist countries, and including of the Soviet Union collapse, and the Western society believe China will be the next, that is reasonable. Also, that is a, a kind of a rational thinking, because you have the similar uh, problems. You have a similar systems, and then maybe the problems are similar. So that is a very important background. But something different look at the, the last one in the year 1990 the agricultural production in China increased fast and China produced 451.8 billion uh, 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 that is a uh, kilos it's a green so the green production in China 
not like mid-1980s, Soviet Union facing the challenge of shortage of the grain supply. But in, in China, when they're facing the challenge of Western uh, 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 media, talking about the China collapse, one thing is a very, uh, fortunately, is a difference with Russia, with Soviet Union. That is a green uh, production increased. And also the green production originally increased in 1984. So and then decreased. And until the 1990, the green uh, production second have a have a second time increased much higher. So that is a to be a good events, to be the positive events can make China have a soft landing because you have at least your your country can survive from the the, <coughs> the hunger. <coughs> this picture shows that when the, the so-called Iron Curtain fell, the Berlin Berlin War uh, collapsed, <coughs> and then Soviet Union have a big change. The last the upper one means that Lenin uh, fallen down. <coughs> Leninism, Stalinism, whatever Soviet Union, no matter who, who is the leader, the important thing that is a uh, uh, there are very big change of the currency value. When Soviet Union collapsed, you know, at that time the currency only can based on the political power. So until the new uh, I mean strong uh, leader take the position and uh, the, the, the Soviet, Soviet rule Soviet Union rule, or not, uh, later became Russian rule, is a big de devalued. And I remember in the year 1991, I visited Soviet Union. At that time, it's a big change. One dollar changed more than four, four, 480 billion. Oh, no, no. Four, four, 4,080, uh, 4,800, sorry. One dollar against uh, rope is uh, 4,800 4, uh, 4, rope. And, but originally, uh, before they have uh, this big change, one rope against dollar is a, uh, one rope can exchange three dollars. So means that uh, many thousand times declined. So the 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 rub value is lowest at that time. So it's it's a big change. Not only not only Soviet Union, but other e European uh, East European socialist countries. So everywhere, the money system collapsed. It gave me a very a strong uh, uh, warning that what is money? Money is that the political powers, the, the close of your political power, how strong you have your political power, how strong you have your currency. So that is a very uh, important. So when I come back from East European countries and the Soviet Union, I wrote a report talking about what happened in these countries, and uh, it's a, uh, I also trying to give a war, a, a, a kind of awareness to the Chinese economic reform. It's a, that is a policy society, the policy circle, trying to make them to understand what the real problem happening in 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 Soviet Union, and then just uh, the same. Uh, uh, time since the year 19, 1990 to 1991, and China started to open the stock market and also the future markets. And later, 
to push the real estate market open. So these are, these are three markets, high risk. So we said it's a venture market, but all of these market can absorb large number of the currency. So meanwhile, at the same time, the Chinese governments can issue large number of the paper money, just print it. So when I, I remember that this, 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 this is a big difference, Soviet Union stopped never going forward to monetization. But when China takes this uh, lesson, China very fast to going inside of the monetization. When, uh, when they opened the stock markets, they, uh, they gave this opportunity to the, uh, that is a printing factory, yin shua chang, means that printing house or something. This printing house, it's a printing factory, special for print the paper currency. So but that time I, I got a, a information, I'm, I don't know if it's true or not. Means they 24 hours use this printing machine to print this paper money, RMB. Uh -huh. Because it's too much used, uh, use these machines, so it's too e easy to worn out. And they got to change a new machine. And also this company going to the public, I mean, to issue their, their, their stock. And that will be very high volume. A lot of investors join the stock market to buy this printing house stock. So this is the beginning of the 1990s means that China changed their way. Originally, China have the same, same similar economic system, but when they took the Soviet Union's crafts, the lessons, they very soon to change to the monetization. So one side to give the, the room for the central bank in China to issue many paper money, Another side, they open this uh, ventral market hmm, to absorb these uh, paper monies, these, uh, these, uh, these currencies. Means that you have, your, you have your money, you have currencies, you're paid not only to buy the commercial goods, buy the real products, you also need to pay your money to buy the stock, stocks, to buy the shares. That means that this, this, this change one side to make China avoid the same problem as Soviet Union. Another side created a, a, a new ec economic crisis. Because whatever you adopt as a kind of measure, you can benefit it from the, 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 the policies. You also need to pay the institutional cost of the policies. So the returns and the cost almost the equal. So that is a, when we gave the explanation about Soviet Union. I said, at that time, I, do, I did have the chance to go to do the observation, and then we, what we found, and then we come back what we did in, in the early 1990s, when we did take the lesson from Soviet Union. And then China changed very soon, very fast change their economic system. So that is a, uh, uh, I don't know how to evaluate it's good or bad, or right or, uh, or wrong. But we only can see that China avoid the, 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 the collapse. And because that time, as I know that, and in the year 1991, first I was in the United States. Every, almost every day, I heard a lot of people talking about China collapse. And later 1991, I went to uh, East European countries and also went to Soviet Union. I, do, I did my uh, uh, observation, I do, did my investigations. And then finally I found that the main problem is that is they remain their economy into the real economy, into physical production, 
they haven't stepped into the, the financialization. So that is, uh, you know, because of the world competition, they got to compete with Western society, with the Western countries. And by such kind of, uh, not only one or two events, there are many compl complicated events. But there's uh, something is a major, major one. So the, I, I think that the major issue is that the whole of these uh, socialist uh, countries only rely on the exchange commercial goods, not use the currency. So they don't have the monetization, they don't have the capitalization. So it means that they stopped from financialization. And, but the world competition, another side, Western countries, they all enlarged their financial capital by the neoliberalism. And then they compete with the least another, another part. So another part lost. That is why we, one, one way trying to be very roughly to summarize the 1980s uh, 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 situation. We can have such kind of picture. I don't want to tell you that my observation and my investigation, my research, it's, a, it's, just, a, just, it's just a one part. I don't want to say that it's right. But I want you to take into your consideration as a reference. Okay, so that is uh, after the twin head uh, multiply control collapse, the system changed. Regional integration means that the globalization must have another name as a globalization or global regional integration. Mm -hmm. The global in regional integration make the world parted as a several part, separated as several parts. And uh, at that time, China is a single one not included by any regional integration. And also because at that time, China still be uh, blocked by Western countries. Western countries still be led by United States. Later, after 94, EU taking place. And after 99, Euro taking place. And then EU can be a kind of strong competitor of the U.S. of the and the NAFTA and U.S. and the NAFTA is a regional uh, uh, power and the EU also a regional power and uh, ASEAN going forward to put China have ASEAN plus one and then ASEAN can be a kind of regional power. Now originally when ASEAN went to plus one plus two plus three gave a big threat to United States. And then United States stepped back to Asia, trying to block ASEAN plus one, two, three, especially ASEAN plus China. So that is, a, originally there will be a triangle, ASEAN plus China, and then NAFTA, and then EU. So this uh, triangle can make this world more, more stabilized, more stable. But it, it means that, but it means that U.S. will lose the leading position, <laughs> cannot be the polar power. So after Soviet Union, there are several options. Uh -huh. Regional integration is a very important trend. If people can do it, can keep going to have the regional integration. The world will be more peaceful, more stable, not by a one polar power to be the world policeman. So that is a, when we talk about the 1990s, we got to think about what is the international background. So the international background at that time is a very complicated situation. And uh, <coughs> but most of this analysis is later when we do our international comparative studies, uh, 
the different countries' comparative studies, we have a more deepened uh, uh, thought of the world situation. We have such kind of uh, uh, ideas. Is a that is a new thought, new creative. But in the beginning of 1990s, the Chinese the policy circle have no such kind of vision. And because of 89, and these are politicians also in the policy circles, they still have a kind of conservative or reform. They have a two so-called part to have the arguments. Some people think that they are uh, conservative. Some people think they are reformist. And uh, these, are, these, are, these are sectarian uh, arguments still be a, a kind of mainstream problems. So at that time, because of, they also have a no very clear picture about depression, about psychological eco economic crisis. So they have no such kind of knowledge to notice that 88, 89 is high inflation and stagnant, and uh, these are enterprises especially the real productions, all now falling into the depressions, they have no such kind of description. Also, they have no such kind of knowledge. They only think, okay, this may be some conservative to play a, a, a role and then whatever. So that is an ideological competition. Ideological argu arguments still be a, a kind of the, the, the leading uh, uh, trends of the media, of the, of the policies. It's a, it's a, it's not good. And uh, they, they also have an, n no uh, uh, measures to deal with the, 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 the depression. Mm -hmm. So but that time is very important things. That is uh, Deng Xiaoping going to the south. Because that American lead Western capitalist countries block China. But doesn't mean that Hong Kong and Taiwan and these are, these are small uh, uh, manufacturing industrials country and the regions followed these, uh, these uh, Western countries because that they have these overseas Chinese entrepreneurs. They cannot stand on the high price of labor. At that time, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong, and, uh, and so on and so, the labor price increased more faster because they, they have settled their 10 years. And 10 years enough, this, uh, they have a very little labor resources. So when they hire almost all the laborers, the first is that the Chinese from Guangdong escaped from, to, to Hong Kong to join the Hong Kong labor markets. That is a Tao Gang. In, in, in the late 1980s, a lot of people think that Tao Gang means escaped from the Guangdong to Hong Kong, is that they are trying to uh, take the liberalism. Uh, they, are trying to gain, they are trying to gain the freedom. Ideologically gave a many report about Tao Gang, but indeed, it's just because of, in Guangdong that time it's agriculture. Uh, production and then Hong Kong is manufacturing production. Manufacturing have a more high labor price means that they can have a more high income. So a large number of this labor, they have the same language and the same behavior, same culture. It's more easier to be absorbed by Hong Kong production. So they flow to Hong Kong. That is uh, quite easy to understand if you are um, if you are a, a normal people, not controlled by the ideology. So it's easy to understand. So that time, the first <coughs> large number of the labor flow to Hong Kong. And then the second is Hong Kong move the facilities to Guangdong, especially move to the Pile Delta area. So when Deng Xiaoping think about this uh, Pile Delta area, is booming economy, so he visit. And then to encourage these people going forward, to absorb these uh, Hong Kong investments, and also in Singapore. So that's uh, almost the same time in 1990, Singapore, the leader of Singapore, 
Mr. Li come to China to even in Singapore is the final one to set up the formal diplomatic relation with China in ASEAN countries. It means that ASEAN countries is all sign the, the commitments to regain the diplomatic relation with the mainland China. Singapore is the last one. But Singapore at that time is meaningful because at that time American blocked China. Originally Singapore is a kind of strategic ally of the United States. But when Singapore uh, signed the commitment, Singapore regained the, dip the diplomatic relation with uh, mainland China. The very important events Singapore did is that to set up, a, to move the Singapore facilities to Jiangsu, to Suzhou, to set up Singapore Suzhou Industrial Park. This is a very large foreign investment because they want to duplicate the second Singapore in Jiangsu, in Suzhou. This is also because of the very limited resources in Singapore. Singapore is just a city with a several million, it's, at that time it's a less than three million population. So it's a very small population size. It's, it's a, as the, in, in Suzhou you, you may have a six million or eight million population. It's a two and a half times bigger than Singapore. So when Singapore moved their industrial facilities to, to Suzhou, means that they, they can reset up, they can set up the second Singapore industries. <coughs> so all of these things has almost happened in the same time of Deng Xiaoping's the South Strip. So the South Strip is an important event is because they are, uh, he tried to make all of these uh, local cadres to believe China still can have the foreign capital flow in. And then in 1992, Singapore moved the facilities to set up the Suzhou Singapore Industrial Park, means that there's no extremity control. And then followed from 1993, 1992, 1993, followed as Singapore. A lot of Western capital still invested into uh, uh, mainland China. So means that it's a break the block. They gave up the block. American, after 1993, also followed other Western countries, gave up the old policy to release control. Yeah, they still control the exchange of military and high tech. But commercial production, United States released the control. So that means that in very, very soon, that is 92, after the South Strip, and then the later of the year, uh, Chinese Central Party Committee have the 14th Party Congress commit marketization. Means the market system is the China reform aim. They set up this uh, aim for China reform, but indeed is that reabsorb the Hong Kong and Singapore and the Taiwan, these, uh, these overseas Chinese uh, uh, investments into China. So immediately the foreign capital flow into China since 1992 to 1993. And then meanwhile, they opened the stock market and wholesale markets and the future markets and whatever. So all of these measures put together to make inflation goes high. That is a very uh, com complicated uh, uh, phenomena in 92 to 93. Look at this, uh, these curves. <coughs> 1993, <coughs> the GDP, 1992, 1993 still be high, and then 94 decreased. 95, 96, 97, GDP, uh, this curve to show that GDP, this blue one, the blue, blue curve shows GDP decreased. And then the, the, the 
the capital, the capital added uh, 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 output also changed from 1993 up to the highest and then downgrade 1994. So 1994, the crisis taking place. So, but we use this a picture to show what to show that whenever the new leadership taking the political power, they got to deal with the downgrade of economy. Means that economic crisis combining of the political leaders change. No matter who is the leader, whoever taking the political power immediately need to deal with the economic crisis. So almost every the third party congress, every time thirty party, party third, the third party congress, when they they they, they claim that the thirty party congress is mainly for the economic policy. But every time when they have this party congress, they need to have the policy to deal with the crisis. That is uh, the regulation. It's a very objective regulation. No matter this media, these uh, ideology researchers, whatever they said, they cannot change objective phenomena. So the, this one to show that when Deng Xiaoping take the power, the GDP downgrade. When Jiang Zemin took the power, also uh, Zhao Ziyang take power, also downgrade. And Jiang Zemin, the third high, yes, when he took power, GDP downgrade. Only Hu Jintao, he's a fortunately, he meet he met GDP upgrade. It's because of last time the premier is Zhu Rongji. Zhu Rongji adopt the, the policy as Roosevelt New Deal in 1930. So Zhu Rongji gave a large amount of the, 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 the government bonds investments to solve the problems of 1997's East Asian financial turmoil. That way we talk about the eighth crisis the AIDS crisis, not now, but I just gave the, the, the as a regulation. No matter who took power, immediately need to deal with the economic downgrade. Means that the economic cycle combining the political cycle, the political is is a cycling changed, economic is also cycling changed, but it's a, you can merge them together. So this picture is very interesting to show that there is a kind of objective regulation. You, you, you may do your analysis on this, uh, this one. How China pass this uh, short-term profound crisis will still be a very important to make other countries, scholars, and the politi politi politicians to understand what happened in China, especially in the 1990s. Most of these uh, mainstream scholars and uh, politicians inside of China, they believe that Chinese reform is indeed start from the 1992-1993. Few people talking about it's because of the 1993 there are very serious economic crises happened. They think that from that time, from the beginning of the 1990s, especially from the 14 party congress, China start the reform. But that is a ref another, another description. Our description is that from that time, China exactly started the capitalization. Finan I, I have mentioned financialization is a mainstream. Under that, there is two parts. One is monetization, another is a capitalization. These are two main sectors. Monetization, capitalization, combining together. 
is financialization. So I should give you my arguments. From the beginning of the 1990s, China really started the financialization. Means that China is going forward into the world capitalism. Not only the industrial capitalism, but also the financial capitalism. So 1990s is a decade of the Chinese financialization. It's the first decade. Second decade and the third decade, now we are in. Okay, so when we talk about that, we got to see that from the 1980s, we said it's a marketization. So the reform means that apply to marketization. From 1990s, we said China initiated capitalization. So that is a old reform applied to capitalization. And uh, you can see that the later 1980s, the crisis happened and then fall into the depression. During this depression period, from the 1990, the China policy circle initiate the shareholder system to make this uh, company to set up the shareholder system to make the old real properties to become that's real properties is uh, machines and the, and the house and whatever to make them into the shares hmm? so the gu fen hua I don't know how to translate into the English. Gu fen hua means uh, stock, not the stock. Sh huh? Share. Shareization? Shareization or something. Shares holding? Shares holding. It's, but it doesn't mean hua. Hua means that to change the real properties, physical properties, into value. Uh, uh, it's uh, into a kind of uh, intangible value. Understand me? Means that you put all the properties into the shares. And then to use these shares into the stock markets. And then you can absorb large number of the paper money in. And then even that is uh, the high risk. So every time the risk can make a lot of money vanish. So this means that you, you, you can play the game of financialization. So that's a very interesting uh, uh, period. So but when we have such kind of sheer realization, <laughs> let's just give a hyphen, sheer hyphen realization, you can think that how much value you can create it to be the added value. That is very, very important. And then monetization. So originally China have a battery system means that every commercial goods you cannot directly buy use your money. So your currency cannot be currency. So I remember that I have given a lecture talking about which year is that Chinese yuan, RMB yuan can be the money, the real money, real currency. Before 1992 Chinese RMB Yuan, not the currency. Because at that time, you need to use these vouchers, uh -huh. all the small books. Whatever you want to buy, you need, you need meanwhile to use your voucher. So voucher at that time also play a role as money. It means that even you have money, you cannot use the money. So the money cannot be money. Money can be money started from 1992 because 1992 Chinese governments abandoned the water system, the battery system, and then almost everything you can buy only use your currency. So that is why I said it started year is 1992, means that monetization started in China from 1992. Shareization starts from 1990, and then monetization starts from 1992. When you have the share, you must make shares go into the market. So 1991, 
China set up the stock market. Shanghai and Shenzhen stock markets all set up in 1991. So 1990, we have shares. 1991, we have a stock market. 1992, we gave up this uh, voter system. We have a monetization. So these are three years, one by another, step by step. That is so-called reform. But indeed, it's capitalization. It's monetization. So by this very radical reform, radical measures to push China from the physical production country, from a kind of industrialized country into the financialized country. So we should know that the 1993-1994 crisis exactly is that the institutional cost caused by very radical to push China from the physical industry country into the financialized country. That is uh, why I said that the seventh crisis in China is very important because these big events, it's a big change. Even I can say it's an essentially change, basic change. That is from the beginning of the 1990s. But this change happened in the Depression period. Few countries in the world can, date, can do such kind of change. Basically, uh -huh, essentially, change a country's economic essential hmm, from real production country, from real industrial country, physical production country into the financial country by depression, by crisis, also by the block, by Western countries block you. That is a very strange. That is also need a lot of people join the research. I, I hope our scholars not only focus on ideological description, do something to the real economy, to what happened is real, reality. And then we may have some kind of knowledge to know to understand what is China. So that is uh, why I talk about that uh, uh, shareization, <coughs> open stock markets, and then the start monetization. And also caused by Deng South Trip, these are southeast provinces, coastal area, absorb a lot of rootless overseas Chinese investments and then to absorb a large number of these uh, rural laborers as the migrants flow to the coastal area. It's also very important. When I talk about the background, I said in the year 1990, China have the highest yield, green yield is the highest, much higher than 1984, because 84 is the very high, it's the whole of the 1980s. 84 is the highest yield. And then 1990, China have the second high yield uh, uh, green. But the, the more you have the yield products of agriculture, the lower price. Because you have marketized, you have given up the, the, the quota control. So when you marketize the agriculture, means the agricultural price, the more they have a yield, the lower price. And then the, the producers, the peasants, have no income. And then when you do some reform, and you absorb this, uh, this uh, manufacturing production into the coastal area, certainly these uh, low income farmers, these uh, agricultural laborers, flow out. That is also, I mentioned that China is a large labor resources country, the largest. And in rural, we have a 500 million labor force. The agriculture only need 100 million. We have a 500 million means that another 400 million can be used by industries. But we haven't, we haven't such kind of big industries. So means that there will still be a large number 
of the labor not stored in the agriculture. It also gave a very special priority to these uh, coastal provinces, these areas. They only used the young labor, I said the fresh labor. 18 years to 28 years. They only take the fresh labor. 10 years means the best labor age taken by the coastal manufacturing industries pay little. They have the lowest e income, lowest salary, but it's a, the high quality labor. 18 years old to 28 years old. That is a, so I said the grassroots, the fresh part of the grassroots taken by the manufacturing industries in coastal area, but pay little. That is a very, very roughly, very, it's a, it's a, it's wild capitalism. Only need young labor. Certainly that they have a, some high uh, capital return. Much higher than they settled in Singapore, in Hong Kong, or in, in Taiwan, and in Korea. So that's why they keep move to China for more than 10 years. Even that China have uh, so many bad uh, comments from the Western media, but this, uh, this uh, capital investment still flow into China because they can take the, the best quality labor, pay very little price. And also they don't, they don't pay the environmental cost. So it means that they can have a very little pay and to have a very high return. So that is that time. So when these, uh, all of these uh, foreign capital flow into China, immediately by the central bank against this uh, foreign capital to issue large number of the RMB yuan. That is uh, also accelerate the financialization. So these are things, these events, very short time to happen and then to make very soon in 1993 Chinese ec economic grow fast. That's a very interesting phenomenon. Originally from 1990, 1991, these two years, depression. 1992, recovered. 1993, high growth. And then this high growth also make a lot of tension relations. And also because of the, at that time, they have a issue large number of the currency. So the, the inflation, the base of the inflation has been there. So when you have a large number of the domestic demand, all the raw materials, oil, energy, and whatever, all have a very strong needs, immediately turn to the high inflation. So 1993, when they take too much foreign capital, they have a large number of the foreign debts and then turn to the budget debts. And then you need to combine the financial investment from domestic bank. So the bank have a very much bad loan. And also the savings cannot catch the loans. And so the percentage between savings and loans means the loans are much higher than the savings means that the bank cannot give enough supply to the local needs. And uh, so means that the, the foreign reserve, the, the budget system, and the bank system all have a deficit. That is uh, 1993. In 1994, all of these uh, three deficits turned to the high inflation. And then the, the CPI, higher than 24.1. It's much higher than the crisis in 1988. 1988, the CPI is 18.6, 18.6%. But 1994, 24.1%. It's the highest CPI in whole of this uh, so-called uh, uh, 70 years the modern China 
uh, economic uh, history. So it's the highest CPI in the history, in New China's history. And uh, caused by this uh, very high inflation, similar things happened in any country, any system, hmm? any political regime. If you have very high inflation, means that almost all of enterprises, entrepreneurs, cannot invest into the real production. They need to take their money out of the real production for speculation. Same things happened in 1949 in China, 49 to 50s. Now you have many private investors. Certainly they wouldn't like to stay in the real production. They take the money into the speculation, also into the smuggling. So at that time, speculation goes high, and then also smuggling. And then these smuggling also make a lot of bad things, like exchange rate. Smuggling, because the smuggling have one third of the tax they didn't pay, means that they have a kind of very rental, rental income come from no pay of the tax. Certainly they can pay to the exchange rate. So smuggling in China at that time in later uh, years, Zhu Rongji as a premier, talking about smuggling, he said annually we have 8 million, 800 billion annual smuggling volume. So means that at least more than 200 billion as a tax lost. Uh -huh. so, um, because they have this extra income, they can pay very high exchange rate. So that time, the market exchange rate, China, Chinese yuan against dollar. The so Chinese yuan only, I think that one dollar can have 11 Chinese yuan. Normal, normal, normal markets is 8.7 or 8.8, .8. but smuggling uh, exchange, one dollar against 11, even more Chinese yuan. So it means that you cannot make order, you cannot make the reform to just uh, marketize the exchange rate. <laughs> so many things happen when the crisis taking place. And then you can see that what is uh, the, the measures the governments take at that time to deal with the crisis. The first is because of the capitalization has been there, has been going forward, you cannot stop. So you, they only can have the measures applied to capitalization. So means that they going forward. First is that to marketize the foreign exchange. Uh -huh. To make the RMB yuan devalued 57% one time. So since the, the January 1st of 1994, they adopt several critical measures. First is that exchange rate means indeed RMB yuan devalued 57% nominally, nominally. In practice, and uh, it's uh, devalued 52%, nominally devalued 57%. And uh, meanwhile, it's that RMB yuan linked to dollar uh, until new century they change. At that time, it's uh, almost 20 years <coughs> fixed to dollar value and then waived with the dollar value. The second one is that issued more budget bonds mm. and also the currency. That is almost uh, that means that to worse the high inflation. The worsening high inflation. And then the same time to have the taxation uh, sharing 
uh, reform to make the central part of the tax increased and then local part decreased. Originally, local tax can be 73% uh, of the total amount of the tax. Central just 23 or 27 or 27. Local is 73%. So when they have this tax reform, central and local half-half, it means that central increased 20%. Local lost 20%. And then local need to take this 20% from rural society. Because down to the county level, almost every county, they have a very serious budget deficit. So they only can rely on the non-budget income. Where is non-budget income come from? Come from occupying the peasant's land occupying the rural land, and then sell to the markets. So since the mid-1990s, a lot of people going to the street for campaign, for the protesting of land. And, but you cannot stop this local behavior because they are short of the budget income. So these things mean that to change the cost to turning the, 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 the capitalization's cost into the local, into the rural society. Means, also means cost transferring. And also, for uh, low class income decreased, and also because the budget cannot pay for the education and the medical care. So the, they have the marketized reform of education system and the medical service system. And uh, also means that the low class people could hardly pay so much high cost of the education and the medical service. Certainly that the teachers and the doctors, their income goes high. But low class cannot pay such kind of high cost. It also means that change the institutional cost to low-class people, to marginalize the population. So that is a, these are measures. And then finally, they got to turn the measures into the state-owned enterprises. They raise up a new policy. <coughs> that is a take big one, release small one. You gave up small, means that these are small and mid-sized enterprises or not belong to the state. Now release them to go into the market, means that you can go into the bankruptcy. So these uh, measures also means that to turn the institutional cost to the SOE employees. So the, the, when the, 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 the crisis happened, you do your research on these measures. What government did in 1994 when the crisis happened? You can find that most of these measures means that they are trying to apply the capitalization and then to change the cost into the marginalized population, into the low class. So that is the mid 1990s. The, 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 in, in name of the economic reform, but indeed it's uh, transferring the institutional cost. Let's see these uh, measures. That is the picture. The new China issued, authorized, authorized the first share. That is uh, in Hainan. Hainan at that time is experiment province to carry out the share reform. Uh -huh. So that is a uh, the reform. Very soon, from 1990, they set up the share system. And then 1992, many hundreds, uh, oh no, uh, thousands, 
uh, uh, enterprises turn to the share holder system. And we can see that the after share, you have a share in 1990 and then 1991, uh, you can have a, 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 a stock market. So 1990s, December, Shanghai have the stock market. And then 1991, in July, uh, Shenzhen have stock market. So these are uh, one by another. They have a, these uh, a stock markets. But not only that, in almost every province, even in these uh, industrial cities, they also very urgent to push their enterprises into the shareholder system. And then they have a large number of the shares. They all want to use these shares to change into the investments. So everywhere they have a informal stock markets. Even in the free markets, you can find some people sell their shares in not in counter, out of the counter. So this very interesting uh, phenomena happening almost everywhere. So that also push the central authority set up these uh, formal stock markets and then to close down all of these local informal stock markets. So in the, in the beginning of the 1990s, everywhere you can find the people sell the shares. And so the, the capitalization of the Chinese economy is a wild and wide spread into the whole China. You can think about that time. Nobody just follow the, the law or the regulation. They, they think that it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a big profit. They, a lot of people want to take, not the job. Huh? We cannot see that it's bad work, but it's somehow to make these departments, especially the departments in charge of the shareholder system, personally take a lot of shares. That time, people said it's gan gu, means that you don't need to have money. You only have the power. You have a right, and then you can have shares. That means that dry share, not, not the bad. It's a, you don't need to pay even a little bit, let little drop money. So you have no money, but you have a dry shares. World to world translation. And uh, it's, it's exactly the, the, the power or the, the right share. And uh, it also means that these uh, officials became corruption. They took these uh, dry shares, means that take, you took the, the properties. And if you sell, means that you have uh, currencies. So it means that this, these are uh, people, these are uh, government employees became corruptions. So the corruptions became, you, you know, everywhere they, they have shares. They have, they, are, they have the reform of the shareholders. They are trying to set up the shareholder system. So almost a lot of cadres, I cannot see how many, how many percentage, but many people take a dry, dry share. And then corruption became nationwide. And also the local cadres even encourage smuggling because smuggling can have at least one third of the income come from you don't pay the, 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 the tax. The, 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 the customer tax is one third. So at that time, a lot of local cadres fall into the trap of the smuggling. And, uh, but sometimes they also very fortunately to have the, 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 the promotion like a, 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 a governor of Hainan province. He encouraged local cadres to have smuggling and then take a large amount of the income, even higher than the total 
uh, production value of the whole province. It means a large number of the smuggling. And then certainly he got a penalty and down to the county level's leader. But several years later, he, was, he got the promotion to be the Guangxi province governor. And when he was in Guangxi, uh, vice governor, he also encouraged local to have smuggling. So nowadays, Guangxi still be a very big business smuggling. So you cannot understand what is a centralized, what is central power, what they did <coughs> at that time. So a lot of in, in convoy, it's, it's incredible things happened in 1990s, but all are in name of reform. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about the stock market, we talk about smugglings, we must know that in 1990s, uh, not very formally, the reform also not very formally. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of people take a lot of benefits from such kind of informal reform. Next one to show that in 1993-1994, I'm to GDP goes high and then pass the gate that is 100%. Originally that GDP goes high and the um, money goes high. Yes, M More GDP need more money. Yes, That is combining. But from 1994, we said the money monetization means that you give more mo money, more than GDP. Nowadays it's almost 200%. But started from 1994, when they issued more paper money. That time is not only because of the monetization, but also because of this uh, inflation. More money issued above the GDP growth means that the potential GDP, potential inflation has been created has been set, set there. So here also means that from 1994, the mass release of, of the change of consumer price index, CPI, hmm, that 1994 is a monthly calculate, it's a very much high. It's because of the monetization, capitalization, uh, it's, it's a, it's a shows that it, uh, the, the right one is a CPI, and the food CPI is a green one, and the clothing means a daily daily con con consumptions. These are these are consumptions. Uh, uh, consumers' price is a much much higher than the inflation. Means the common people take too much cost. So. apply to monetization, you need to have the instrument. So the governments did a big change. Originally, the bank belonged to the state, play an important role for implement of the policy. So the bank is uh, another pocket of the governments. The first pocket of governments is budget. Second pocket of governments is a bank. All carry out the government policy. But because of monetization and the capitalization, and China have first set up the commercial bank in the year of 1993. Mm -hmm. the same year, when you accelerate monetization, you need to have a tool, that is a commercial bank. So since the 1993, Chinese uh, governments issued new documents to split, it, to split the policy uh, function from the bank system, and then reset up the policy bank. So we have, uh, from that, that year, 1993-1994, we have a full state commercial bank. We also have another three policy bank. And then after that, 
the central bank became central bank. Originally, central bank also have a commercial business. Originally, we only have one bank is enough. All belong to the governments. So that's before reform, central bank also have the business. But after this parted, the function, so we have a commercial bank, policy bank, and the central bank only implement the macro adjustments as a central bank. So central bank became a central bank. I said, remember, I talked about 1992, currency became currency. 1993, bank became commercial bank. Uh -huh. All applied to monetization. And then the policy function split from the commercial bank. So China set up three policy banks. And then when they finished this structure of the financial system, the central bank became upper grade to be the central bank. Only carry out the readjustment, the macro policies. Mm -hmm. So that, is a, that means from the beginning of the 1990s, the first part of the 1990, applied to the financialization, China did have the reform of the financial system. And when we talk about the 1993-1994 the crisis, you can see there's a curve, there's a, there's a bar. And 1998-1999, there's a big uh, down, downgrade. And 1993 and 1994 doesn't mean that the production decreased, but means what? Means that the exports and the import will become deficit. Uh -huh. This is down to the zero, 1993. This means that exports to down to the, the minus, and then. The, when you have large amount of the manufacturing investment in China, so you have a large increase of the uh, uh, capital value because there's foreign capital flow in China, so you have a capital increment. And also, because of the, you have a monetization <coughs> to make <coughs> some interest group, and then you have a <coughs> consumption expense. So 1993, all goes high. And that means that suddenly you have a high growth. And then turn to <coughs> 1994, <coughs> means that you have a three very important things. That is the uh, first reform means that the exchange reform, RMB devalued 57%. And then tax reform, means the tax revenue sharing with the local and the central, half and half. And then monetization and capitalization to, take, to make this, uh, the, the uh, economic growth downgrade. But the exports increased, and, but the consumption decreased. These are uh, 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 bars to show 1993 high growth and then 1994 downgrade. We can also see that the foreign debts, the left uh, part of the curve to show that the foreign debts, almost the, 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 the percentage of foreign debts up 200%. When you absorb large number of the foreign investments, turn to the foreign debts and then to make 1993, 1994, the foreign debt goes much, much, much higher. So that is a uh, <coughs> last time's crisis in late 1980s. The crisis also caused by the foreign debt increment. And then in the year 1994, 1993, also caused by the foreign debt go, goes high. So originally in 1988-89, the foreign debt climbed to 70%. This time, 1994, foreign debt percentage closed close to 100%. So 
So these uh, became the very important events of the crisis, economic crisis. Here also shows that 1994-1993, the green curve, the curve green color, means that the current account, the balance of current account, and in 1993, it's down to the minus until 1997. Mm -hmm. And uh, the red one is means that the hard currency reserve, the foreign reserve, and also that time is lower. And then, uh, and the, the, the uh, uh, the annual uh, cu current account uh, 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 surplus in 1993 also decreased uh, to the minus. So this means that you have a kind of budget deficit, you also have a current account deficit. These uh, deficits turn to the budget system became the budget deficit and so that that is also the reason for China changed exchange rate so this uh, shows the background of exchange rate reform that is in name of, that is also in name of marketization here is this uh, uh, these curves shows that the fiscal system reform why they have a tax reform Tax reform caused by the central uh, 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 budget percentage downgrade. You can see that this uh, green curve shows the central income of the total physical income. And in the, 19, the beginning of the 1990s, downgrade very fast until 1994, the tax reform increased. And then because of the physical income, to GDP decreased, so the the governments can do nothing. Generally speaking, the government's uh, 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 fiscal income to GDP in normal country is more than thirty percent. In welfare country, these are uh, like North European countries. It's a high welfare; they need more than fifty percent. Mm -hmm. Somehow, like Sweden or, or Denmark, even more than 60%. So, UK is uh, 50%. US, 34%. In China, at that time, it's just 11%. 11% means that you can do nothing. So, this, this picture also shows that because of radical reform, monetization and capitalization, governments play less important role. And then the government's fiscal income became lower and lower. Governments cannot pay the social cost. So that time is why the education and the medical service all put push into the markets because there's no fiscal income. Until 1995 is income. The, the fiscal income increased. And then until the new century they can have a little in, uh, uh, payments for the social welfare and whatever, but up to now, the government still pay little in the education and the medical service. So that is a uh, at that time very big, a big change for the for the capitalization. So when you capitalize almost the public goods, you almost public everything, even the the the. The, 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 the hospital and the university and the schools all capitalized means that the capitalization gave up a lot of cost, especially the social cost. So the 1990s, the social cost taken by the low class. Here is the case to show that the local budget have a very big deficit they only can take the non-budget income because formal budget income decreased very fast. They have no such kind of uh, 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 such kind of ability to pay for 
even the cadre's salary, the teacher's salary. So in 1990s, down to the county level, a lot of local cadres cannot have monthly salary. Means that the part the, the county budget half income they can pay the salaries to the doctors, teachers, and the, and the, and the, and the cadres. If they have an less budget income, they just no pay. They just pay to these uh, retired cadres. Means that they, because these uh, cadres have uh, no ability. But if you are in the position, you're a cadre, they don't pay you. Means that you need to take money by yourself. It's very strange. None of any people can believe that. But indeed, in 1990s, a lot of cadres have no salary, but still have their life. You can imagine what happened. Mm -hmm. So this, I don't want to say that all of them fall into the corruption. But if you don't want to use your power to take some, some interest, to take some benefits, means that you have a no income, no money. So this case, this curve shows that it's a very serious situation in the, down to the county level. This one is one county in southwest China in a mountain area. Uh, the yellow one is that non-budget income. The whole county's budget income in 1990s caused by the 1993-1994 crisis this uh, non-budget income goes much high by selling the land. When they're selling the land, they need to take the land from rural area, from the village. They pay little to take the land and then sell maybe many times high price. Mm -hmm. So that is a Non-budget income goes high, main, even 80% in some counties, 80% of budget, 80% of non-budget income, as a, and the non-budget income play 80% of the total income. Mainly come from the, 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 the land occupation. And then adjust a lot of campaigns. So that time, we have a special concept that is a mass, uh, mass, um, uh, how to, 群体性治安事件 mass, uh, insecurity, uh, events, something like that. But means that large number of the people join this. Uh, so-called mass campaign, <clears throat> and, uh, and uh, annually increased 10,000. And that is also from the, the, the 1990s. Until now, it's, uh, uh, every year is um, uh, it's, uh, 15,000 so-called mass uneven events. So that is a very important phenomenon that you must know that caused by that. And then down to the village, down to the county, they can take the non-budget income by occupied land. And then down to the county, everything turned to the death. They need to construct the road in the village, they need to give the uh, uh, investment into the irrigation. Many in village construction all need money, but they have no, no money. Only can take the loan from these rich people or from the, not from bank, bank cannot give them, or from enterprise but all a high interest rate. So 
the later 1990s, the village deficit, the village uh, 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 bad loan, average in average, it's a several million, three to four million, because long termly they have no investment from upper governments, but they got to care about their own infrastructure construction and the social welfare. They have aging people, they have women, they have children. They need to care about all of these things, and then all these things need to give them expense. They need to money, but no money. They only can take the loan. The loan turn to the deficit. So the village, the they have no budget, but they got to the, take the money to pay all of these needs. Village also become very serious, and township. Uh -huh. So the township also the, need to pay for the for the public con con constructions. So the ten years later, you can find that the 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 budget deficit. In county level, township level, and the village level, all are very bad. Uh -huh. So I remember that once a time when we do our investigation in the local, we found that the township budget deficit higher than 40 million. The village, they have no budget, but the village bad loan and the village the the debts increase to millions, three million, four million at that time. So this, this phenomenon still be there and also still be increased until now. I have no chance to carry out the investigation nowadays, but it must be more than 10 times increment. So the lower levels, not only the governments, but also the village administratives, all have a very serious deficit and the deaths since that time. So when we gave the conclusion, when we try to summarize 1990s, the, 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 the crisis, we got to say that monetization and, the, and the capitalization is the two mainstream of financialization. China catch up financialization, avoid the collapsion, collapse, mm -hmm. not give, uh, not uh, allow this, uh, this uh, prediction from Western countries at the beginning of the 1990s to predict China must be collapsed. China haven't been collapsed. Avoid the, the collapse, but pay very high cost. Because avoided collapse means that you need to avoid the sweat union's lesson to step into the financialization. Because financialization led by 1980s neoliberalism. When they changed the static system, they changed the essential of the world economy. If you cannot follow, means that you will be the loser. The person be the loser, that is a small event. But if a country, especially the biggest population country, became loser, that will be the disaster. So China followed, catch up the financialization by their own measures, monetization, capitalization, to give, the sh to give the reform of the shareholder system, and then to issue the shares, and then open the stock markets, and then to edit the currency uh, publications, whatever. And then they publish, they, they publish a lot of money, and then to make M2 to GDP from 100% increase to the 200 percent and then nowadays the, the total financial capital in China even bigger than United States, than EU. <laughs> Means when China joins the competition by this uh, big continental country itself, even China haven't joined 
a thin or drawing any regional integrations, but China did the efforts trying to have it. But the 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 main uh, picture we have to have that is China followed the world financialization as a historical era. This one hmm, is a main picture. The main idea we got to take from this lecture. But when they transit to the financialization, when they follow the United States neoliberalism, they got to pay very high cost. One thing is that the financialization means that you join the financial competition. And the financial competition means that the, the dollar system deal with Chinese RMB Yuan as a main competitor. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to win such kind of competition. <coughs> Another side, financial capitalization <coughs> is a euro, it's a kind of mainstream, mainly rely on transfer out their cost to other region or other countries, mainly transfer out to developing country. But inside of China, when you cannot transfer out your financialization's institutional cost to outside, you only can transfer to the inside, <coughs> to low class, to rural people, to environment, to natural resources. <coughs> that is uh, the, the internal con uh, contradiction became more and more worse. The tension relation inside <coughs> also became worse. So, caused by the first period of the capitalization, and then the 1994 crisis happened. The government's radical measures to deal with the crisis means that they transfer the 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 the, the institutional cost lower level by level, down to the county. And then to make the low, lower governments give more bad treatment to low class. And also to make the government's uh, departments, especially the economic departments, involved of this capitalization. To take large amount of benefits became corruptions. So nowadays, the government's corruptions became a big challenge to this new authority. So we should know that the government's corruption started from the 1990s capitalization. Uh -huh. And then we may understand why that is a very critical issue now, because it's more than 20 years past. This capitalization more than 20 years. And when we have such kind of uh, uh, <coughs> main picture, <coughs> we may understand if China still be China, maintain such kind of uh, Chinese marketized socialist reform or socialized market system, whatever, you need to know that there is a kind of internal mechanism. If China cannot strengthen the rural society, if China cannot rebalance the regional gap, the rural and the urban gap, mm -hmm, China will be destroyed by internal contradiction. Because if the, the local uh, 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 people, the low class people cannot have a increment of their income, you have a no domestic demand. Even you have industrialized, you cannot long-termly rely on 
exports overseas demand, especially when United States has a word by Obama and followed by Trump, a word that they must, the United States must regain the real production, the physical production, means that they will large decrease overseas demand. So if you cannot make your people, your local, have domestic demand, the total industrial capital will be no room to keep going. So that is a, when we have the main picture, we will have a kind of analysis of the future to show that China passed this uh, danger in the late 1980s and the early 1990s. That is a very serious danger. Hmm? Should be followed Soviet Union collapse. But China survived. By they made a big change. That big change is capitalization. That's monetization. That is a big reform. But caused by the big reform, China has entered the new era of financialization, join the financial competition, and also trying to maintain the industrial capital. So they have a, China now put this, uh, this, this country into two euro. One is a lower euro, that is industrial capital. Another is high euro, that <coughs> that's a financial capital. So China trying to make this a big body, rely on these uh, two different era, that is also the capitalism. So when we have such kind of uh, uh, understand, you mean, mean the, these are two era, originally it's a parted, but caused by China catch the financial capital era, that's up level, and stand on the industrial capital era, that is low level. So this means that they put these uh, two things together in, in this one country. This is quite uh, uh, strange. So, have such kind of picture, we can understand what its difficulties now China has. And uh, <coughs> also think about this uh, <coughs> international uh, uh, situation. The first is a uh, Americans succeeded to upgrade to the financial capital era, mainly re rely on the military power to control all of the this surplus of the capital flow into the United States to make the American capital economy grow up. That is their strategy. That means American must maintain polar power in the world, based on the military force. But all of this uh, world has been divided into several regional integration. <clears throat> so if you do your forehead, you can see that the leading country, that is the United States, got to not only deal with China, but also need to deal with a sin and EU. Nowadays, American cannot hold on the NAFTA mm -hmm. because that the world situation changed a little bit to make American cannot hold the NAFTA. So if American cannot hold up NAFTA means that the, the regional integration will not be succeeded. And, but other re regional integration still be also, also have some little bit change, also have uh, difficulties. But this uh, competition by these uh, three parts will be more complicated in future. So when China have then the over financialization inside, China got to go internationally to join the financial competition, not only inside, but also outside. And that is uh, also you can understand this uh, mainstream interest group very urgent want to make 
the financial sector have openness. So all of these uh, things to organize where it's a complicated situation to blend any politician's eyes. Nowadays, nobody can give a very clear analysis about this complicated situation. Where to go? So even we have done our analysis to know where we come from, where we are, we still cannot give a very clear analysis about where we should go, where we must go. So when we finish our uh, analysis about the seventh secular crisis, I still keep this thinking in mind. When we do our analysis about financialization, since started from the beginning of the 1990s, and what is the re returns, what is the cost, we, we, and we know that. We still cannot give very clear pictures to show that we, where we should be. That is a very difficult nowadays. So I, when I finished that lecture, <coughs> I got to say that, uh, sorry, and uh, even I have done the analysis about the 1990s. We still need to keep going to, to understand what is the, what has happened following. And maybe when we finish the whole of this 10 times crisis analysis, we may have a more clear picture. So let's keep this story, waiting for the other analysis. Thank you. I finished. Thank <laughs> you.